you have any personal dating issues that you need addressed right now? Dating and life coach Mr. Locario will help you with his 30-minute game session. The Mr. Locario's 30-minute game session is a private one-on-one coaching session on the phone or through Skype. For 30 minutes, you'll get answers to any dating questions you have. To set up your 30-minute game session, go to MrLocario.com. That's M-R-L-O-C-A-R-I-O.com. MrLocario.com. Listen up, family. Are you looking for some amazing beats for your next project? Then check out my man at DesmondABeats.com. He has hip-hop, R&B, pop tracks, everything you need to have a dope song. Go to DesmondABeats.com right now because he's running a limited time deal on beats and you don't want to miss out on this. He also has a song mixing and mastering service so you can get that crisp, tight sound. So again, go to DesmondABeats.com. You look out your window and see people enjoying a beautiful day, but you can't because you need to wait for hours at the tax office to do your taxes. Those days are over. Let Who's Your Tax Man help you. We do tax preparation, individual and business. And best of all, you don't have to leave home. With our virtual tax prep service, submit your documents to our secure and encrypted portal. We use the same level of security your bank uses for online banking. We are licensed and bonded, and you'll get the maximum refund guaranteed. Call us at 1-800-951-9591. 1-800-951-9591. Or visit us at Who's Your taxman.com this is the fortune 500 marketer musa ali are you an entrepreneur looking to brand your business or are you looking for ways to level up your own personal brand to create a larger reach well join me in oakland california on february 10th and i'll give you the secrets on how to build a multi-million dollar brand to purchase tickets go to universitybrand.eventbrite.com again that's universitybrand.eventbrite.com Spots are filling fast, so don't miss out on this opportunity to take your business and life to the next level. What up, everybody? It's your boy, Chris Man, everybody. And I got a brand new video game app out right now, everybody. It's called Crispy's Biscuits, everybody. And you can get the Crispy's Biscuits app right now on the iPhone Apple Store, everybody. And you can also get it on the Google Play Store, everybody. As a matter of fact, everybody, it was the number one game on Google Play all last week, everybody. The game is so exciting, everybody. There's 10 levels you can help me get through, everybody. Well, I'm dodging bottles of lotion, everybody. I'm dodging hair clippers, everybody. And I'm dodging taco meat, everybody. So get the Crispy's Biscuits game right now, everybody at crispysbiscuits.com, everybody. Now, I'm about to do my coon laugh, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oparas.com, that's the website. A lifestyle, way more than a name brand. Plenty of apparel, yeah, they change in the game, man. To make you fresh, that was part of the game plan. And they talking financial independence. Oparas even talking health and wellness. You need to check this if you want to elevate. Oparas is the real deal, better get it straight. Hey, yeah, they got what you like. So ahead of the rest, so visit the website. That's O P A R A S. Yeah, that's O P A R A S. Oparas. The most intense new video game app has now arrived. A medieval kingdom has been plagued with chaos and disorder. An evil force has dominated the land. And now it is up to the bravest knights to fight back the demonic forces and bring justice to the kingdom of the Moors. Play the newest, most exciting battle fight game app ever, Moorish Kingdom. Available at MoorishKingdom.com. You're now tuning into the king of game, Tariq Elite, on Tariq Elite Radio. What's going on, family? We're back right here with Tariq Radio. Glad to have everybody tuning in. I am broadcasting right now from Dubai. I'm in the UAE, the so-called Middle East, and I was just in Zimbabwe last week. Had a great time out there. I talked about how much fun I had with the family out there in in Dubai. Not Dubai. I was in um, Zimbabwe. Had a great time out there. And um, I'm here in Dubai. Dubai is cool. Dubai is a very interesting place. I've, I've done some filming 
and I've done some video stuff out here. I'm going to post it on my Instagram. Everybody should be following me on Instagram at Tariq Elite if you're not following me. But, you know, how can I describe Dubai? There's positives and negatives. Let me talk about the positives of Dubai. One positive, it's, it's the buildings are nice. You know, they have nice structures out here. So that's one positive. Um, another positive is there is a lot of money to be made out here in Dubai. There was a lot of money out here as, you know, this is oil money and that creates other industries. So there is good money out here. I mean, hell, I'm getting in these Ubers and these Uber drivers are driving up in brand new Lexuses and Mercedes. I mean, you riding in some luxury shit for an Uber driver with an Uber driver. So, you know, that's cool. I went to the biggest mall in the world. I think that's the biggest mall in the world, the Dubai Mall. That thing is huge. If it's not, they got like shark tanks in there. So, you know, that's lovely. That's nice. And also I chopped it up with some brothers from America out here. And there's a, um, a community of black Americans coming out here. So that's a real big positive. Shout out to my brother, Aaron Heath and Mills. Uh, I posted a video of them chopping it up. We were, they were cutting hair and a lot of folks from Dubai, a lot of black folks were like, hey, who are those brothers? Man, I want to hook up with them. I want to go to that barbershop. So that's why, and on a side note, we're going to have a reality show thing we're going to do with me and the girls from ISM Radio where we're going to go around to black businesses. I won't even say all over the, the country, but all over the world because I'm going to feature some of this stuff on the ISM reality show as well. And that's why it's important to go to different black businesses to show who's who because a lot of folks in cities just don't know. So this is why it's important for us to do that. We're going to be doing that soon and I'm going to keep you guys posted on that. But you've got a group of black folks coming out here stacking money. You know, a lot of expats, they come out here and they get teaching gigs. That's the most common thing. They come out here to teach. Um, my brother Heath said there are a lot of people come out here for engineering and nursing. So black folks in America, if you want to change the scenery, you want to get out, explore the world. I mean, you come your ass over here. And plus, they I think they take care of the housing. There's like these um, these very these real nice apartment complexes that they have. I think people get to stay in there for free if they teach. So you have benefits like that. There are pluses like that. Um, some of the minuses, I would say, I would say to me. Dubai reminds me of Las Vegas. It's like Las Vegas without the casinos. And the thing with Vegas, there's a spirit when you go to Vegas. Certain places you go, certain places, they have a certain spirit. And when you go places, you're really going for the spirit of the place. You're going for the spirit. Just like when I was in um, Zimbabwe, there was a certain spirit there that I loved. There was a spirit from the people. There was an energy there that I loved. When you go to Vegas, even though Vegas is basically the strip, the Las Vegas strip, and there's a lot of extravagant buildings and all that. But what makes Vegas is not those buildings. It's the spirit of Vegas. Because when you go to Vegas, anybody who knows, if you drive to Vegas from L.A., the minute you go over that hill and you see the lights and all that, you start getting excited because you know it's turn up time. You can feel the energy. It's time to turn the fuck up. You're about to have a good time. So there's an energy there. Dubai, there's no spirit or energy. You don't, it, it, it's not there. There's no energy. There's no new, there's no Dubai spirit. You, you dig? You notice every time you see travel brochures of Dubai, it's always just the buildings. You just see a bunch of buildings. You never see the people. You. You know, they, they'll show you tourists, but basically it's a bunch of inanimate objects. They show you buildings, stuff like that, but there's no real spirit that makes you say, hey, man, this is the spot. It's nice buildings, but other than looking at the nice buildings, it's like, okay, what else? And that's something that has to be defined to really make Dubai pop off. 
and I know it's kind of conservative because, you know, you got, you know, it's a Muslim country and men and women, certain places they can't even go into together. It's real. It's, it's, it's very interesting. But there has to be a, a defined spirit to really make Dubai pop off. It has a lot of potential. But uh, it's nice. I'm, as I'm talking to you at my hotel, it's like a polo club. It's, I'm, as I'm talking to you, I'm watching people play polo on horses outside my window right now. So there's some real ball of shit now. But you still need a spirit. The city needs a spirit, though. And that, that spirit has not yet been defined. But I digress as far as that. And, you know, I go around when I go to cities, I, I go looking for certain cultures and and things and I wanted to try a Caribbean restaurant out here for some reason the food is pretty good um, but I wanted to try a Caribbean spot I saw a spot that was downtown Dubai called Ting Irie T-I-N-G T -I -N -G, Irie so I, and, the, and the reviews were good so I said okay it's a Jamaican spot because you know my thing is I like to patronize black owned businesses and that's what our show the ism reality show is going to be about it's going to be about us patronizing black owned businesses so we get there or i get there rather it's um in this building real nice i go in real fucking nice restaurant it's, it's real big and there's some sisters in the front thick than a motherfucker real nice looking sisters in the front looking i think they're caribbean i think they're jamaican and I'm looking in the restaurant, it was some some that, that kind of looked off. I said, okay, is this, does a Jamaican cat own this? Because this place is kind of big, and I know Jamaican cats. Now, Jamaican, this place looked like it cost probably like shit, at least half a million dollars to get popping. And I know a Jamaican cat ain't going to put no half a million dollars in no damn one building. A Jamaican cat will put 5000 in one building and get the rest of that money and start about eight, nine other businesses. They're going to spread that motherfucker. and They're going to diversify the shit out of that money. They ain't going to just put it in one spot. So that was a, kind of a red flag right there. I said, all right. The Jamaica's going to spread that little paper. <laughs> they ain't going to put it in just one big ass spot like that. No. But... I'm looking around. They got a couple of pictures of Bob Marley, and there's another clue. They had pictures of Bob Marley in different um, um, extravagant Jamaican-style colors, but they didn't have any pictures of Marcus Garvey or anything like that, nothing like that. And usually at a OG Jamaican spot, they got a picture of um, um, Rastafari, Haile Selassie. Um, you know, they're going to have Marcus Garvey, somebody. So then I looked at the menu, and the menu had jerk chicken, curry goat, oxtail, they, you know, festival bread. And I asked the, the young lady, I said, where's the curry chicken? There is no curry chicken. I said, uh oh, oh, shit. Uh, that's weird. I ain't never been to a Jamaican spot with no damn, that didn't have curry chicken. Then I said, I, I put my order and I got the jerk chicken and the festival bread and the rice and peas. And I said, y'all got ginger beer. Because you know, if you, you're a Jamaican spot, you're going to have the ginger beer. Ginger beer is not real beer. It's basically ginger ale, but it's way better than ginger ale. And she was like, no, we don't have ginger beer, but we have like a ginger lemonade. I said, come here. Hold, come here, come here, come here, come here, young lady. And I just said, look, look, who owns this fucking place? <laughs> I straight up and down asked her, like, look, this is just me and you. Who owns this place? And she kind of looked around quietly like, it's a Canadian. I said, okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. So it's a Canadian dude owns the place. Some of this shit ain't adding up. Ain't no, ain't no curry chicken and no ginger beer and no Marcus Garvey. I said, okay, somebody bullshitting. And, you know, even the name of the restaurant, Tingari, you're trying to sound Jamaican. It's, it sounds like a white dude trying to sound Jamaican. And some of the things on the menu, yeah, man, um, yams. Oh, stop. Okay. All right. You know, so once I got past the fuckery, <laughs> 
once I got past the fuckery of the menu and all that, even the bathroom, I went to the bathroom, I swear to God, the men's bathroom said mon, and the woman's bathroom said woman. I said, if this motherfucker don't stop with the bullshit, I'm gonna walk up out this bitch. So, but the food was off the chain though. I'm telling the food was good. They got a black chef in there. The brother was putting in work, but the Canadian owner who owns Ting Irie, get some fucking curry chicken on your menu and some ginger beer, all right? But I digress, ladies and gentlemen, man. But anyway, like I said, I, I just got back in from Africa. I was over in Africa for a minute. A story just came out that's very interesting. Um, I, and I saw a lot of Chinese people over there at the hotel in Zimbabwe where I was staying. You know, the Chinese, quote unquote, donated the building for the African Union. You know, the African Union is where all the African nations get together. Their headquarter building was donated to them by the Chinese. Now they just, people just found out by coincidence that the damn building has been bugged. There were microphones all over the place, secret microphones, computers were sending data to a server in Shanghai. So they've been in there spying. I mean, you understand, I was, nothing is free. You gotta understand, if you get one person to help you with one colonizer, make sure the person helping you don't become a colonizer too. You gotta understand the game. Don't exchange one, we see African people, we gotta, we kinda got a habit of doing that. We kinda have a habit of allowing one colonizer to um, come in and help us with the other one, then they become the colonizer. Happens with Arabs, then white supremacists, then Chinese. So we gotta cut that out. We gotta be very cognizant. We gotta know how to play that game militarily. But I digress, ladies and gentlemen. But what I wanna talk about today, on the Grammy Awards, and a lot of the Grammy Awards, a lot of black artists were, were really putting in work. A lot of black artists were getting awards. Shout out to Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars got like, I think like, probably like eight awards. Cause I knew his album, that 24 Karat Magic, that was the hottest album of the year. So I'm not surprised that album definitely deserved it. But I know Kendrick Lamar won a couple, I think. So it was a, a lot of black artists were getting it in. And during the ceremonies, there's this, one female singer, Camilla Cabello. I think I'm pronouncing her name right. I think she was in a group called Fifth Harmony. She is a Cuban American. Now you know how those white supremacist Cubans can be. I've already talked about the history of those white supremacist Cubans. The Cuban white supremacists are damn near worse than the Anglo white supremacists. But Camilla, got on stage and gave a speech and talked about the dreamers. And I'm going to play a real quick clip of that. Hold on. Tonight in this room full of music's dreamers, we remember that this country was built by dreamers, for dreamers, chasing the American dream. So, Camila Cabello got on stage and said that America was built by dreamers for dreamers. And she knew that that was a very disrespectful statement and they purposely did it in a room full of black people, a room full of black artists that was very calculated how they did it. They knew what they were doing when they put her on there to say that. And I need y'all to be able to peep the game. Understand, her doing that, her getting on there, saying that America was built by dreamers, basically what she's trying to say is white Latinos, because that's what they're talking about when they're talking about dreamers. They're talking about the white supremacist Latinos. That's what, they don't give a shit about some of those other 
quote unquote dreamers from African countries, they, they're so small in numbers that they don't, they just look at them as residuals, just little residual um, sacrifices. They don't even trip on them. When they mention dreamers, they're really talking about white supremacist Hispanics. Okay? All Hispanics are not white supremacists, but there are white supremacist Hispanics. And that's something that we're just going to have to really come to terms with. But Camilla, with her racist ass, got on that stage and her saying that, her saying that America was built by the dreamers, meaning the white supremacist Hispanics, that was them openly throwing black Americans under the bus. That was them openly waging warfare on black Americans. The white supremacist Hispanics at that moment waged open warfare against black Americans. Let, let me back it up a little bit. One of the reasons why the Trump administration and all these people are coming down on the Hispanic immigrants. One reason is that whole genetic survival thing because there's a lot of Hispanic immigrants who have those black grandmothers and black grandfathers and they don't, they don't wanna mix those genes up. But also what it is, it's to get the white supremacist Hispanics really online and on code. It's an old case of pimp and hoe. When a pimp, let's talk, let's get into some Mac lessons here. When a pimp has a stable of hoes and he wants his hoes to act right and get on code with him and get on code with his agenda, the pimp will take one hoe, maybe even two of the hoes, and brutalize them in front of the other hoes for any minor, minute reason. You smack them around, kick them, beat them with a wire hanger. And that will get all the other hoes in line. So the other hoes, they don't want none of that beat down, so they're gonna start acting right. So you're beating a hoe down so the other hoes can act right. And that's what this is the case of with this whole dreamer immigration thing the Anglo white supremacists are smacking up a few white Hispanic sacrifices so that the other white Hispanic white supremacists will get on code. They will immediately say, I don't want to be treated like that. I don't want to be thrown under the bus. So let me really get on the nigger hating code of white supremacy because that's how you codify white supremacy. You got to show your disdain and disgust and disrespect for black Americans and black people in general. Now, some of these groups, they already do it in their own country, but that ain't good enough. You don't have to learn how to do it here. You gotta learn how to do it with the black Americans. So Camilla getting her little racist ass on that stage and making that disrespectful comment was a coded diss to black Americans because that's that white supremacist talking point. The white supremacists love trying to dismiss black contributions to America. That's their thing. They like to try to pretend that the, they built everything on their own, they did it on their own, which we know isn't true. So now for Camilla to get out there talking about where well, we dreamers built America for dreamers, she knew what she was doing and all the other suspected white supremacist Hispanics that's co-signing her, they know what the code is. The code is we all disrespect the Negroes so the white Anglos will get us back on point. That was them openly waging warfare on us. The white Hispanics, they have openly called us out and threw us under the bus. They've been doing it behind closed doors for the longest. We've been warning you about these white supremacist Hispanics. I'm not talking about all Hispanics. I'm talking about the white supremacist Hispanics who believe in dominating and mistreating based on race. Understand this is chess, not checkers. 
And the sad thing is, this Camilla chick, Camilla, that's her name. And, and by the way, you know this Camilla chick? This shows the kind of disrespect she has for black folks. Look her up. She has a history of calling black folks niggas. That woman has a history of saying racist shit about black people. Even her own group member in the group Fifth Harmony, her and other people were calling that sister a nigger and all types of shit. Look Camilla Cabello up and look her history of racism up. And she tried to apologize by saying when she was young, they, they found out she had a, a troll account that she was running where she just said racist shit all day long. So, I mean, she proves my point. So for her to go up there and say the shit that she said, that's them openly throwing black folks under the bus. And I'm really the only public figure that has spoken out against what Camilla said. The I, I put up a tweet saying that that woman is lying. That is not true. The Dreamers did not build America. It was built by a free African labor. And my tweet got damn near 30,000 tweet, retweets. My tweet went viral. It went viral. I had Fox News calling me and all this so shit wanting me to come on because, and that's another thing, all you white supremacists, right wingers, because what they want to do, they kind of want to use me as a pawn against them. And no, you're not going to do that because this argument, this is an argument between two groups of white supremacists. This is the group between uh, a fight between the Anglo white supremacists and the Hispanic white supremacists. My thing is, I don't want y'all bringing us into your fight. Do not bring us into your fight. This is your fight. And when I put up that tweet, it went viral. I had a lot of other white supremacists, Hispanics, cop and please. But nobody can debunk what I said. And some of them are trying to say, well, y'all took what she said out of context. No, we didn't. She said what she said and she meant what she said. There was no out of context. Some of them try to even get bold. Some of the white supremacist Hispanics. We, the dreamers, we, we dreamers did build the country. And my question to you, dreamer, if you built the country, what year did you build it? And what country did you come from? Nobody can seem to answer that. Then they started getting into some name calling and all that. The name calling came real fast. So the white supremacist Hispanics, they try to run the same con game on us as the Anglo white supremacists and black folks aren't going for it. And on the Dreamer website, the Dreamer, they, have, they actually have a website in their forum, they says, they said, black activists are not with us anymore, and you damn right. We're not with you anymore. Black folks are waking up to the con game. We have done too much for these so-called immigrant groups as black Americans. We fought for you. We stood in front of bullets for you. We helped get laws passed for you, and you've done nothing, nothing, nothing but show disrespect, disdain, and contempt for black Americans ever since. And our capes are off. We are no longer caping for you. So if you wanna go ahead and try to openly throw us under the bus, good, so now we know where we stand with you. So now the confused Negroes will know where they stand. Awaken people, we already knew. You dig? See, the thing is the, the white supremacist Hispanics, they like to play this three card Monty game when it comes to race. And they've been sitting on the fence playing this little bullshit game that we're gonna just cut out for you. See, the thing is, they like to be white when it's convenient. They like to be brown when it's convenient. And they like to be Native American when it's convenient. Now, they want to be white. They love the benefits and the privileges of whiteness. But when the Anglo whites throw you under the bus, all of a sudden y'all come over here with us. Hey, we're brown, brother. Uh, brown pride, we're brown together. We're, we in this together. And then when black folks say, hey man, I don't know what that brown shit is because you, you got George Zimmerman over there. Y'all haven't done nothing to him. Y'all got Officer Yanez over there who, who killed our brother. Y'all haven't done nothing to him. You got all of these other white Hispanics that's killing us. You haven't done nothing to him. So I'm not with that. I don't see you as brown, brother. You're just another white supremacist. So now then they try to go, well, 
my people come from the indigenous people of the land. Now they got an Indian accent. See, they changed, they even changed their accents when it's convenient. All of a sudden, now you got a, you had a Hispanic accent, a white accent. Now you got a Native American accent. You got some drums. Now you want to put the feathers on. Well, my, my, I, I come from the Choctaw. I'm the indigenous. My people were here before everybody. No, 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 no. No, y'all not going to play that game. Y'all not going to play the I'm um, the Native American game. No, because on the census form, when you have an option to choose Native American, y'all don't. 95% of you do not. When it's time to claim Native American heritage, you got a choice. You got black, Native American, or white as race. And 95% of y'all put white. You do not put Native American. You don't play that Native American game until everybody didn't kick your ass up out of the, the fence for trying to play them. Now you want to be Native American. No, you don't get to play that. Your name ain't Native American. It's a Spanish name, Lopez, Hernandez, or Santora, whatever. But we're going to stop this fence-sitting bullshit with these white supremacist Hispanics who are opportunist at every damn level. You're not riding our backs no more. We're done caping for you. Black people have done enough I've talked about this, even going back in the, uh, the 14, 1500s, black people like Gaspar Yanga going down there, getting the Spanish off y'all. One of your earliest presidents, Vicente Guerrero, he was a black dude, getting those people off, all, get, getting them people off of you. Hell, Obama, Obama did a whole bunch of stuff for the Hispanic community. I, the, the black president will roll over backwards for the Hispanic community, but the Mexican president, Vicente Fox talk shit about black people. I mean, it's never, ever, ever reciprocal. These white supremacist Hispanics have never, ever, 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 ever done shit to help us. Ever. Not only help us, they show contempt. We're done. Hold your own damn nuts. And that's what it is with us. And you're not going to lie. You're not going to sit up and say, hey, we, we all struggle together. This is their whole thing because they're on my my Instagram trolling now talking about blacks. You're not the only one black people who struggle. We all struggle together. This ain't about struggling because number one, y'all came over here by choice. I had one Latina chick talking about, hey, all of us colored people were brought over here. Who? The fuck you talking about? I mean, they they just making up history out of thin fucking air. I'm like, what what colored group came over besides black folks who was brought over by force? All of you other people came over by choice after African labor created all the wealth to give you a country to come over to. Y'all just kind of digging history out your ass. And then, you know, some of the white supremacists are trying to throw their bullshit in. Well, fucking, it was the Irish that built America bullshit. Irish didn't build a goddamn thing. They didn't build shit. Irish people couldn't even um, uh, work in the sun for long. That's where the term redneck come from. They next would burn up. They couldn't even work in the sun that fucking long. And also the Irish indentured servants got freedom dues for their little work that they did, but they weren't putting in no work like that to build nothing. When you got people over here who can do it for free. So we got to check people on this old revisionist ass history that they're trying to get into. The white supremacists and the white supremacist Hispanics, you're going to have to check them on their bullshit and understand they are letting you know in no uncertain terms that they are against you. Black folks, we used to tell black folks this all the time. Even now, the rapper Chameleonaire, he has a personal relationship with some Hispanic cats and he's trying to cape for some of the dreamer families or whatever and people criticized him. As they should. And, and Chameleon, I know you think you're doing the right thing, but the fuck all that, dude. Fuck all that. You jumping up and we caping for people and fuck all that. They're going to have to hold their own nuts, family. They're going to have to hold their own nuts. If so, it's somebody you know that's different. Look, I got Hispanic friends that I'm hella cool with that I know. But all this whole thing, this act of good faith for all of these random um, suspected white supremacist Hispanic groups. and Nah, no, no, no. They're going to have to hold their nuts just like we have to hold ours when we have to deal with issues. And they don't help us out or do anything except show contempt for us.
we're going to have to come to terms with reality. Just like on Love & Hip Hop, that chick, Amara Lenegra, whatever her name is, the real beautiful dark-skinned sister. I think she's Dominican with the big old afro. She's real dark, real pretty. They, people think that she has black face on because her skin is real smooth. But that's just the way she looks. She's a very attractive sister. And she's just going on and on and on and on about the blatant racism in Latin America, which we already know about. I've been to many of these Latin American countries and they treat the black Latins horribly. And they want to come over here and do the same thing to us. And you ain't going to do it to us. And you want us to help you do it to us. That's the killing thing. They want us to help them, ride with them, so that they can mistreat us like they treat the other black folks in their own country like shit. They want us to assist them in treating us like shit. <laughs> Y'all got the game real fucked up, Hector. Understand me? That's not happening. You're going to have to hold them on nuts. You're going to have to hold them and hold them tight. Get out my goddamn face with that bullshit. See, the thing is, they want to gamble. And when they lose on a gamble, they want us to come pick up the pieces and clean it up for them and fight for them. Do you know how many white supremacist Hispanics voted for Trump? A whole bunch, especially down in Florida. There were a lot of white Hispanics voting for damn Trump. A lot of them. There still are. You still have white supremacist Hispanics. I be arguing with them on Twitter. Um, um, Fairbanks. What's her name? I forgot her. Cassandra Fairbanks. She's another Hispanic white supremacist who's all down with the alt-right. I argue with her all the time. Licking under Trump's ass. They voted for Trump. Trying to be team white supremacy. Once Trump got in office, he turned on them and said he's going to build a wall. Now, all of a sudden, they they lost on the gamble. So they want black folks to come and clean up their fucking mess after they gambled and lost. It's just like going to, let's go back to the Vegas analogy. analogy. You want to go to Vegas, fuck off all your money on the slot machines. You didn't win nothing. And you want somebody to come and, hey, brother, let me, let me borrow some money for you. I lost all my money gambling, man. I need to pay my rent. I need to pay my car note. Can I borrow some money from you? I'm ass out now, man. I'm really struggling. I'm really, I need your help, brother. What, you just, you fuck your money off in Vegas. I know, man, but I thought I had a sure bet. Well, nigga, don't, I'm not paying your fucking rent. And that's what they want from us. See, they want black folk to help them pay that rent and your goddamn car note because you fuck your damn resources up by voting for the wrong cat because you thought you were team white supremacy. Now you brown. No, we're good on you. You made your bed, lay in it. You bake your cake, eat it. You put your drawers on, hold your nuts in those drawers. We're good. So black people understand that these people, these white supremacists, Hispanics, have openly waged war against black Americans. So all that black brown coalition bullshit that black folks bought into, that was never a fact, that has never, ever, ever been a fact. The white supremacists, Hispanics, none of them have ever done anything for black Americans. That's why they, all they can do is talk in circles. They know good and well they didn't build no damn country. The country was already built before they came over here. They can't play that whole, oh, I'm really Native American because on the census, you go out of your way to not claim Native American. You got to know the games they play and cut them off on their bullshit and don't let them come around you. My thing is, look, all that DACA dreamer thing and, and also the whole dreamer thing, that's, that's kind of a play on Dr. Martin Luther King's words because that's what a lot of these white supremacist Hispanics have been saying to me. Hey man, we're dreamers, man. Just like Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King was a dreamer, man. No, no, don't no start talking about Dr. fucking King, all right? Because in the civil rights movement, y'all weren't even in there either. Y'all weren't helping in the civil rights movement. So let's not even go there. I'm tired of people trying to play black folks and have us do all the hard labor for them and they benefit and we get shitted on. That's not gonna happen no more. We're becoming more politically sophisticated and we're going to start getting on code just like you all are on code. The the capes are off. We ain't caping for none of you people. Now, all you bed wenches and coons, your asses don't notice too. 
if y'all bed winches and coons want to go hug up and suck up on on um white hispanic mommy and white hispanic poppy well take your ass on somewhere too let us know who you are so we don't fuck with you either either let us know who you are so we don't fuck with you either but i digress ladies and gentlemen let me get up out of here in a minute because i'm about to go swimming pool or some shit while I'm out here. This is my last day here, by the way. Oh, another thing. Um, I saw something about Kim Kardashian. <sighs> listen, black people. Uh, listen, I want y'all to listen to me. Stop falling for Kim Kardashian trolling black folks, too. That's another thing. Kim Kardashian and her PR team, they troll the shit out of black people in order to garner up publicity for her. There were some things where Kim Kardashian took pictures and she had these braids. And she was posing, you know, damn near new where she had her titties out and all that with the braids. And then all the media stories start saying people are criticizing Kim Kardashian for cultural appropriation. Because she said she has, well, these are my Bo Derek braids. And then all the media outlets start talking about the controversy behind Kim Kardashian's cultural appropriation. Let me tell you something. That's a crock of bullshit. That's manufactured outrage in order to get PR for Kim Kardashian. Understand, Kim Kardashian doesn't do anything. I'm not shitting on Kim Kardashian, but she doesn't really do anything. She doesn't sing, dance, act. She's not really a model. She doesn't do anything. So in order to keep her name in the headlines, there always has to be some type of manufactured controversy. So this is something that PR teams sit down and say and plan out, hey Kim, we're gonna put braids in your hair and then we're gonna have people say that this is cultural appropriation and we're gonna use that controversy to get you some magazine slots. It's all planned. Don't buy into that bullshit. The media outlets, all of a sudden, they care about what black people think about her fucking hair. These media outlets understand. They don't give a shit about us when we're talking about other things. When we're complaining about non-justice, we're complaining about people getting killed. We're complaining about black women getting raped by these white supremacists. These media outlets are silent. They don't get, they don't, they act like they don't hear our voices. But one or two people say something about Kim Kardashian's braids. Now, damn, every media outlet is jumping on it. Come on, man. Let's not fall for the fucking okie doke. All of a sudden, they care about what black people think about Kim Kardashian's fucking braids, and we don't really give a shit. All right, that's just them using black folks or manufacturing a fake outrage propaganda campaign because I don't even think any black people really complain or y'all might have complained after the media told you to complain. See, that's another trick bag they do. They put out a story like, oh my God, black Twitter is up in arms. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, shit, let me be, I'm, I'm black Twitter. I better be up in arms. Let's stop falling for the bait. Let's stop falling for the bait. Please stop falling for those cultural appropriation stories that happen with the Kardashians. It happens every few months. Y'all haven't noticed that? Even when the those daughters, the girls, the other Kardashian sisters, they had like some Tupac shirts or some shit, some hip hop shirts, and people were on that same, oh, that's cultural appropriation. <laughs> and then they run and do the media cycle. That's a con game. It's manufactured fake outrage. Let's stop going for it. That's the only way they get shine is for them to appear that they're offending us. And I really wish y'all catch on to that bullshit. Anyway, man, that's been today's episode of Tariq Radio. Go get your movie, 1804movie.com. That's the Haitian Revolution movie. We had a very successful screening over in Zimbabwe. Much love and respect again to the brothers and sisters in Zimbabwe. You know, the brothers out here were trying to get a screening out here and 